Hi again, and welcome to episode 30 of the Evil and Eerie podcast. Yes, you heard me right. 30, 3 0, the big 30. <laughs> yeah? You want to celebrate with me at some point? Celebrate the podcast? 30 episodes in. Mm. Yeah, we're going to celebrate by seeing some demons this weekend. Yes, we are. So, how are you? Are you okay, young one? You know, I thought they, it was they, you know, they recognize that the podcast started, so oh. they have to chime in because they don't want to. There, there are intro music for now. There are standard intro music. These yes. dogs fighting every time we start recording as if they magically know. I don't understand. I, maybe, maybe the old people that live in your house, the ghosts, wow. kind of rile them up. Whenever we start, they're like, all right, now go bother them since we started. But uh, we are not on a new location. We're just on a different side of the room. Do you want to introduce? This Michelle is... names her fruit. No. So why don't you tell them their names? This is my um, fruit shaped cookie, uh, cookie jar slash teapot slash um, salt and pepper shaker collection that I started a couple of years ago going a to. Cookie jar? There's a, this is a cookie jar. That was my grandma's. Do you, oh, they jar. open. I didn't even That's realize That's a cookie it. jar. That's a cookie jar. Do you have jar. cookies this in there? This is a pitcher. This is an artichoke bowl. Those are salt and pepper shakers. The one in the middle that's a napkin holder. That's Why do you have fruit in an artichoke? Is artichoke a fruit technically? Also, do you have any cookies in there? Currently. In any of them. Maybe. Potentially. We're going to find out. No, I took them out. That's for the best. Well, were they the ones that were wrapped in plastic? Oh. Oh. You want some hot oh. rocks? Uh, oh, we should play Bean Boozled. Uh, Probably not with that set. I got a whole lot of pop rocks stashed. I don't like pop. I've never been a pop rock it. person. And then. It always creeps me out that they explode in your mouth. some. Oh, wow. Banana flavor. They look tick. like corn. <laughs> I was going to say, are they They're corn tic-tac. flavor? I don't know what these are from. Probably a while. I don't think so. But we should play Bean Boozled, just not with that set. It's probably expired. I don't know what that means. You don't know what it, it's when it, it all these packages have dates on them, and if it says if you use Best Buy, that means they're expired. No, what's a Bean Boozled? That you, that's a game. You didn't know oh. that? Oh yeah, it's let me let me. I thought you were implying that the jelly beans were a game. They are. They're a part of a game called Bean Boozled. See, it's 6th edition. They have games where you, like, spin a wheel, and there's either, like, a good flavor or a bad flavor, and you, you're hoping that you get the good flavor, the good tasting flavor of every color. But sometimes, and most of the time, it's the bad one. Like, And they are really disgusting. Like, if you had eaten those and not known that, that there was um, a game behind it, you would have been disgusted because they're absolutely yeah, horrendous. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. Uh-huh. But you people have twists to them. Like you can do like trivia. Like if you get the question wrong, you have to eat. Because I'd rather not eat any of those to, at all. Even though some of them are good, I'd rather not test my luck. So you can do like trivia. You can say like if you get the question wrong, you've got to press your luck. You could really make being ruled fun. People don't realize that. But that scary? one's probably expired. Is it? What'd you say? Is it it's scary? It is because you might. There's one like. Let me let me just tell you what the bean boozled flavors are. Okay, there's dirty dishwater. Yeah, dirty dishwater. It's either you get that or birthday cake. These are, by listing the pairs, they're the same exact color, so you don't know if you're getting dirty dishwater or birthday cake. That one's new. Another one is stink bug or toasted marshmallow. I flip and hate stink bugs. I had to catch myself there. Almost said another word. Barf or peach. That one's disgusting. Toothpaste or berry blue. That one's good. That one is good. The, the toothpaste one is actually pretty good. Rotten egg or buttered popcorn, those are both disgusting. So if you land on that color, you're screwed either way. Stinky socks or tutti frutti. Canned dog food or chocolate pudding, another disgusting one. Spoiled milk or coconut. Dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie. <laughs> That's a new one. Or booger or juicy pear. That's another disgusting one because pears are gross. And if anybody tries to fight me on that, they will get. So, anyway, that's Bean Boozled. Definitely play it if you haven't. Are you going to play it? No. What if I brought it here? No. 
You are no fun. I'm not playing any games that involve eating anything. Okay, but it's it's edible. It's just yeah, not. But... It's well. Okay, but what if trivia was attached to it? Like, if you get the question right, like, wouldn't you want to take that risk? No. Isn't that fun? No. All right. Well, maybe if anybody else wants to play with me on a future video, you can, because she doesn't want to. So I bet today, I know someone that follows us that'll play. Does their account name begin with a C? Is that where your nickname? Oh Lord, we don't talk about her. Uh, <laughs> So we're back with episode 30, and we've got a special one for you because we're going to be talking about exorcisms today. Sorry, dog, I just kicked. We're going to be talking about exorcisms. And if you don't know what exorcisms are, then hopefully you have a definition. hopefully it never happens to you and you don't know what the hell is going on. No, I have a different. Exorcisms is when you get possessed by the devil. I don't think. What? How, would you describe it differently? Well, it's not you could be possessed by anything. Or a demon, sorry, not just the devil. So you are right on that when you get possessed by something evil most of the time it's the devil but like if in the exorcist have you seen the exorcist i've seen yeah i've seen most of it when linda blair gets possessed by the devil so how is your week going i know you have a special story to share with I don't hype it audience. up because it's actually, I don't know, it's like, it's, it was just... God damn it, just share it. It's been a weird week. Mercury's in like Gatorade or something, I don't know. Mercury is in Gatorade? I bought Gatorade last night, the yellow flavor. Go on. That's the worst one. And I'm judging him. How? My favorite is Purple Rain. Mm. All Gatorade tastes the same. That is so not true. I know. <laughs> lemon Lime, how do you not like Lemon Lime? Lemon. Actually, it's the nastiest, most generic flavor. Okay, on with the story now. So, one of our clients was in foster care when they were younger. And apparently it was like a house of horrors type scenario. Like the children were being like fed like raw meat and like beaten and like yelled at. And it's literally like you can look it up. Um, I'm not going to say the name. It's just, I'm just going to keep this Tell very general, but I will. But, um, I, cause she did end up getting arrested, but there was, she had like a whole bunch of foster kids because she was like a church woman. So they never suspected her. So they just kept giving her foster kids. And one of them was a two year old girl that apparently was like crying at the top of the basement stairs and the woman's reaction. Um, and literally all the other kids, like our client was like watching this. She turned her diamond ring around, so it was on the inside, and smacked her so hard that she flew down the stairs and died. In front of all the other foster kids. And the woman was like, did not do shit. Holy moly. So... Did she ever get... She didn't go. Oh, she's still alive? That was not necessary. It's not like this was a hundred years ago. How? Oh. Oh. I was just assuming it was like 1970s. You said church woman. And I thought old. Like I'm, telling, old I'm talking days. to you about one of our clients right now. Was this a recent event? I mean... Before 2000? 97. Oh my gosh. That's... That was Look, only two I'll, years before I'll, I was give born. Give me the thing. I'll put it up. I'll bring it up. And while she does that... I, this is a you know, <laughs> I was, I was so close to narrating what you were writing that I did. I was like caught myself. That's just habit. So, was this in Connecticut? Yeah. Oh my. So, Check holy it out. mother of pearl. All right. You two can end it now. They sound so, I like every time I listen to Oh wow, videos. it's not far either. I know. From where we are. I, that's why I was like, what are you talking about? Oh my. Please subscribe. I'm going to go get my ginger ale while you do your whole yeah, spiel. Yeah, go, go for it. Maybe some please more snacks. Please, maybe some what? Maybe some more snacks. Oh. Please subscribe. Like everything we post. Follow us. We are uh, on YouTube at the Evil and Airy Podcast. Just go to our link tree. If you are watching us, Physically right now, you're already on our YouTube. Good job. Just hit that, <laughs> hit that 
uh, like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and hit the bell so you don't miss any episodes. We are on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Evil and Eerie Podcast, and we are on Twitter at Evil Eerie Podcast. So make sure you follow us on everything, and we... You want one? No, I'm good, but thank you. What is it? Oh, no, I'm good. Oh, also, that's not... Sorry, she's moder- modeling off mac and cheese to me. And are you going to have one? I don't know. I wish I could make That's not the mac and cheese I was talking about, though. I'll show you what I was talking about when you come back. That's because that stuff's okay, but let me show you what the good stuff is. Okay. So, sorry. I I have an exciting uh, little tidbit to share with you guys before we jump into the exorcisms. And I know, sorry, we're 10 minutes in, and you're like, oh, you haven't talked about the exorcisms yet. Like, hey, stop. You're about to hear something really interesting, so bear with me here. But how are you guys doing? <laughs> Didn't I sound like I was bipolar there? Are you, like, actually... I saw, one time, I saw... What? Are you... <laughs> what are you even saying? I, I just yell. I scolded the audience, and then I said, I hope I you're mean, doing like, well. I you. So, no, I, I was at the... Uh, oh, that's not the mac and cheese I want. So I was at the casino one time, and I was in a store, and they had all of these magnets. Oh! <laughs> I really wish I had flipped the camera around for that. Some, what just happened? Water just started spouting out. My laptop got a little wet. A little, not a lot, but. I really hope that's at least a little bit visible in the, the, in the screen. Um, what just happened? That just uh, sprouted up. She just said, I'm going to get you some paper towels and then threw an empty, an empty paper towel tube in the room. No, like, I had to go get some here. Oh. So I was at the casino one time and there was this store and it had all these magnets on it. And I'd have to look on my Snapchat to see exactly what it said. But one of them was along the lines of, I hate being bipolar. It's effing awesome. And it was, I couldn't stop laughing at it. It's and it was so this woman with a crazed look on her face. So what the? I know, I don't what know what I happened. Do? I keep pulling up, I'm trying to look up Stop and Shop Mac and Cheese and it's just not. Oh, okay, I found it. This bowl is filled with water. So, so while she's tidying up a little bit, I'll continue to entertain you all with um, what I was going I'm to say. Scared. So this. Is it going to happen again? It might. This weekend, everybody, I am going to gather with one of my friends who is a uh, psychic and medium, and I'm not going to reveal her identity until she gives me the green light. If she does, I'm going to try to get her on the show because she's really, really interesting. She has seen a lot of demons. I know I've mentioned her before in an episode, one of my solo episodes. Do you need a paper towel for your computer? No, I'm okay. It didn't get that wet. So, she sees a lot of demons. She's a medium, psychic, like, seen a lot of ghosts. She's got a lot of interesting stories, and I've only heard about a couple of them from a mutual friend. So, I'm hoping this Saturday when I convene with her, I can convince her to come on the show or give me her stories to share. And um, she is a she has her own business. So if anybody is in the area, or maybe I don't know, she might even do Zoom can stuff. You pull it up so and you want to get thing? sure Thanks. at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say maybe afterwards. Pull it up. So maybe she can do a Zoom thing for some of you that aren't in the area. Uh, check her out. Um, I, I'm realizing I'm saying this as if there's a way that you'd be able to check her out. I'm not providing any identity. <laughs> So that's not quite possible, but I will get her permission. And if, let me know if you'd be interested and I can, I can privately send you her information because that would be, that would be more appropriate, I feel like. So what do you, we're going to talk to Michelle from out of frame. What do you, have you, you've had your, your mind read before. My, I had my mind read. You know what I meant. <laughs> you've had your palms read. Let me, I got, I got a lot to say. Okay. Let me just get this, I got 40 more seconds. Oh, perfect. So. I'm sure you could do some great editing. 
I will do some entertainment. You know what? They'll do. If if you want to skip ahead 30 seconds, go right ahead. <laughs> and tell Michelle and Matt because do I'm not editing any of this out. Uh -huh. It's it's too much work. But That's what they want to hear. It's too much work. It's too much work. So so we are going to, like I said, jump into exorcisms. Except we're not. Cause we I feel like all of our episodes though, we're talking about nothing for like 20 minutes. No, it's only like 10. No wonder we I am don't have any ah, Damn it, I'm gonna have to edit some of this out. Yeah, Whatever. I told you. How was there water over here? I don't know. <laughs> oh, great. Now, now I really don't have a choice. I'm going to have to because you dropped the f bomb twice. <laughs> no, because then you can't monetize it. Boring. Hey, you know what? I want money out of this one day, in years, you know, <laughs> in years past. Yeah. Thank you. You're so encouraging of my desires. Yeah, right. I don't want to edit it, but I want. Well, money. we were doing pretty good up until that we were on a roll as far as what we weren't stuttering at all there's nothing to edit that's what you're talking about this is what you have to get the trashiest trash that you can buy in trash land don't you dare how do you like that better than that oh this is actually compression right now um so yeah i, I went to a psychic and she's point. Mm. said a lot of things that felt accurate about my current situation with life at the time. Are you years later continuing to believe they're accurate? Well, I mean, everything has occurred essentially. Oh, good. So. Oh, good. <laughs> Great talk. Well, I kind of lost my, my groove a little bit there, but <laughs> we're demons on the loose. Five famous exorcisms is the, is the article that we are referencing today. Have any of you been exercised by a demon? If you have, like this video and share. If you haven't, like this video and share. Are you, <laughs> who are you communicating with? No. Now, Are we going to get a definition of an exorcism now? Sure. I'm going to go to wiki. The expulsion or attempted expulsion of a suppo supposed evil spirit from a person or place. So, oh, a place can get exercised too? Did you know that? Places, objects, anything can be Oh, uh, well, objects I knew. Places I'm a little bit surprised at. Surprised about. <clears throat> I've never, like, walked anyway. into a place and just feel an ominous. I am right now a little bit. That's why we record here. Just adds to the vibe. I'm sensing an evil spirit eating mac and cheese. I hope the demons with no heads come running after you. <laughs> Stop it. There is water over here. That was wild. And? I'm just saying. I know, I said it got my laptop a little it's bit, not a lot. Spicy eating. Nothing I couldn't wipe away. So, demons as our book burners, I'm guessing that that's what this website calls their fans, no, come in all shapes and sizes. Like death, they are a universal equalizer. No prejudice or preference is shown in who they maim, kill, or possess. Mm -hmm. no, What'd you say? They don't give uh, you know what. I just stopped myself. That's better. I just stopped myself. Oh, what is it? We're 19 minutes in. I'm going to have to do a check <laughs> later and see. As we look forward to the un uh, to the upcoming premiere of season two, I guess this is a show too. We're just gonna s skip the introductory what are you paragraph. Even reading from? A website. Um. All right, let's let's move ahead. 
or we're gonna alternate dramatically reading these or do you want me to do them all or do you want to do them all i mean we don't actually have to do that but i think we should talk about this one mainly because i i don't know it's got a lot of elements going on okay got a lot to talk about well, the first one is robbie Mannheim, more commonly known as roland doe roland in the doe Roland Doe's exorcism was one of the most famous exorcisms ever performed. Eventually transformed into the Hollywood box office hit, The Exorcist. To protect the 14-year-old boy's identity, the priests involved in his exorcism referred to him by the pseudonym Roland Doe. In preparation for her imminent death, it's a woman? No. In preparation for her... Perfect. If you read the whole story, you didn't re pre-read this? No, I think I'm doing a pretty good job narrating it dramatically. In preparation for her. <laughs> okay, maybe that interjection of that's a woman was not okay. But in preparation for her imminent death, Roland's aunt encouraged him. To... Oh, sorry, okay. I'm I'm up to speed now. It's We're talking about the aunt when we're saying her. Wow. We could have written this a little grammatically better website. We need to start reading things before we share them. We'll see. In preparation for her imminent death, Roland's aunt encouraged him to contact her using a Ouija board post-mortem. After her death, he followed this advice, opening a door to the world of the living for demons who eventually possessed him. During his possession, it is said that numerous religious artifacts flew off the walls, often accompanied by unexplained noises, heavy footsteps, and disconcerting sounds of scratching. Eventually, the possession became so severe that the boy's speech began to change. From his mouth came the language of tongues spoken in gritty, guttural voice, quite unlike anything Roland had uttered before. He levitated in the air, writhing whilst <laughs> deep scratches, wounds, and claw marks appeared on the boy's skin. That's always fun. So you wanted to go off into Ouija boards a well, little bit. Well, I just think, I mean, there's a lot of elements in this one. First of all, it's a movie, so it's like people know what we're talking about. Ouija boards I have always been interested in. We used to have some at work, like we've mentioned multiple times. Now, have you ever played with a Ouija board? No. Have you known anybody that's played with a Ouija board? Yeah. What has happened to them? They're all dead. I Did just know it's a like, bad they idea. Return in their houses. It's a bad idea because that's they have... literally. So that's why this one's such a good one because, like, that's literally what, like, the second you invite things into your space, like, it's not like a person that's just there and you can kick out. It's like my friend knows a lot about your, that. <laughs> your psychic friend that sees the. Oh yeah, well I've heard from our mutual friend that she is. She has a lot of advice when it comes to you can't like demons will not leave you alone. Yeah. Once they're in, like, there's no getting rid of them. Let it. You can't let them into your space. It's divine like divine intervention. Well, and that's the whole thing too. It's how we've talked about how like there's different planes of existence. So it's like really like, they're like this is, once you let their plane onto yours. Once you let those together, mm -hmm. it's not like something you can just pull back apart. Yeah. Unless you get an exorcism, and that's just a whole thing I don't think you really want to go through based off of the story here, because I don't think it really seemed to end well overall. No, I mean, for them to make a movie about it, you know that it was... And then you know like a lot so of crazy serious. stuff happened on the set, too, I mean, of The Exorcist. I heard. I heard. Like, we have to do that once again, that. like opening up this like. That's why I always tell them I, I'm super nice to these ghosts, and then I'm, I constantly say, "You're gonna say not today, demons. Mm -hmm. Not today." Well, they might not be demons. No, not the old people. Oh, but you gotta oh, keep oh, the oh. old people safe <laughs> because that's another people. thing. It's like you know, like how like regular ghosts can be targeted by like demon ghosts. Oh. I didn't know that. Uh, actually, you know, for someone that is, you know, doing this podcast, you don't seem to know a lot about. Well, that this is stuff. a learning experience for me. That's part of the reason I'm doing it. But do you have more information on that? I should ask my friend. She might know something. She would definitely know. We have to have her on the show and do like we a do. whole. I really hope she. Does. I really hope she. I have a demon. Dog here. 
You have two. No, that's, that's all her. That's the sound that she makes. I forgot. I was going to say last episode you said they were a collective squad. So they are. We refer to them as one person. The Muppets, but Gigi is the demon. Oh. She's possessed. So, as we were saying, with the whole, like, Ouija board, like, did they, did your friends have a haunting experience with it that you knew? Or were they just like, eh, nothing really happened, but... Because I know people who have said, I mean, unless they're hiding it, who have said they've played with the Ouija board and nothing happened. You know? I don't think it could have been a fake. Like the one at work, which was... I tried playing on it, because I I told you about fake. the woman that, like, ran out crying. Yeah. <laughs> I think you told, said that in the, the uh, like I'll never forget. She was just like, I can't be episode. in here. She was like, she was like, literally, she just like left. She left her like kid inside too. It was like like oh a my. family. She just straight left her family. Like left. I mean, shame on the owners of our company for putting that in there though, because how are you supposed to know whether it's real or fake? But like at the same time, like that was that woman was ridiculous. But at the same time, like that was dumb on them. They should have just had that in the waiting area for the staff equipment. There's a lot of dumb stuff. I tried playing on it, and the coworker I was with moved it. It's like, nice try, nice try. We moved it. Do you remember the freaky doll that we had? The slappy? Yeah. The ventriloquist from Goosebumps? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to have, if any of you have seen Goosebumps, if you haven't, you really need to get on that Netflix right now. Or read the books. Your choice. Or both. So. Right now. Were you the one that said you had them all in your basement? Mm -hmm. We're gonna read them. We're gonna reread them all. That's the book club if you want like to join the that. Choose your own adventure one. It's the best. The what? Choose your own adventure. I do not think I've read that. There's like a those. couple of them. Like you like go to like whatever page. Like you, it says like if you choose this, like go to page whatever, and then that's so there's like different outcomes. After, I wonder if he still writes them. He probably does. Um, I'm going to have to get one of those. Or borrow them from you. We'll go peruse. So. I don't know what that's down there. There was, there's a couple of, I'm pretty sure it's like three or four books and episodes. It was a multi-parter because this dummy, Slappy, was a returning character. And it was this ventriloquist dummy and we had one at work. I know. It I went missing one day. I don't know where I know I have a picture is. somewhere. I don't, I don't know. It went missing a couple of years ago and nobody's seen it since. Are we going to go look for it? We'll see. It's in the dumpster with, um, what's his name? The staff. <laughs> they used to work on the puzzles. Who we won't reveal. Did we say their names last episode? No, we've actually been pretty good at that, I think. We'll call him Mitch. Number two. Annalise Mich... I'm assuming it's pronounced Michelle. Oh, we're done talking about that? Did you want to continue? I don't know. Was there more to say? This, this boy, Roland Doe. So, well, I'm, I'm rereading it now, and I didn't realize it was after the aunt's death that he... Yeah, isn't that... She literally brought this upon him. <laughs> oh, my God. Lorenzo. <laughs> I'm not the one that said Lorenzo. it. Lorenzo. All right, well, 28 minutes in. I'll isn't to, that messed up? Now. It is very, very... That the aunt was, like, so selfish that she's like, oh, talk to me. And what happened to her? She, probably, she possessed him. She probably got eaten by that demon. Straight I wonder up. what happens when you get eaten. Like, if you're a good spirit that gets eaten by a demon. Do you not get to do anything anymore? I think you're, like, actually, like, done, done at that point. You're just, like... Well, that's not good news. I might have to join the dark side. That way I'll never have that. I don't think it works that way. Oh, could another demon get me? Probably. Oh. There's probably like just a whole chain of Well, like, I'm going to be hiding in the afterlife, let me tell you. I'll be hiding in this apartment. Oh, God, <laughs> I think this is a safe place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he didn't hear that. I'll make sure they didn't hear that. I just, I don't I know. It. I feel like there's, uh, there's just a lot to unpack in I mean, this one. All the classics happened. His speech changed. His mouth. He started speaking tongues. Like that's when you start speaking like Latin, which is the dead language. So do you think no there's like 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so you think that there's like these like ancient demons, and then there's like fresh baby demons that are like, you know, poking people with hot sticks, and then there's these old demons that are like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna possess someone. It's All like different both. like capabilities of like demon. Do you go to demon training school? Do you have the option to become a demon? What puts you in the category of a demon, and how does one transition to the demon realm? A lot of well, I wonder. I would love to know how many of these people are still living. That got exorcisms. Yeah. Some Google people have it. survived them. Just like but. some people have survived lobotomies. And they're functioning well. And they're functioning. Oh my God, he's still well. alive. He's born in 1935. Uh-uh. So he's about 85. He'd be 85, 86. He's just chilling. Unless they just didn't report the death. Oh my God. The, uh, uh, uh. This was in Maryland. Weren't we gonna? Wasn't Maryland what we were gonna talk about? That's weird. <laughs> yeah, it was. We got rid of that real quick. Well, I mean, now here we are. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Aunt Harriet, for introducing him to the Ouija board. That's so like. Bitch. That's so. Imagine just like being like your aunt being like, hey, like, you know, like, aren't you gonna miss me? Do you want to talk to me like when I die? And the boy being like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, he's possessed by a demon. Oh, get this. <laughs> During the exorcism, the boy allegedly slipped one of his hands out of the restraints, broke a bed spring from under the mattress, and used it as an impromptu weapon, slashing the priest's arm and resulting in the exorcism ritual being halted. What? <laughs> um, both priests visited... Oh, so then another priest came in. They both visited Roland in his relative's home. They allegedly observed a shaking bed, flying objects, and the boy speaking in a, like I mentioned in the other article, a guttural voice and exhibiting an aversion. What was he saying? To maybe he just wanted a snack. I don't think. I think he, maybe there's. Did they have a translator? No. Maybe the demon. Was I don't just know. Like well, it could have been. Thomas doesn't necessarily. Hopefully, they gave him the other kind. Well, so I'm saying it's like maybe he was just misunderstood, and that's why he was being so dramatic because he's like, no one's listening to me. I just want like. You know, I just want some pop charts, and everyone's like getting mad at me. I don't know. Well, they are saying on one occasion the boy was repeatedly seen scratching the words "hell" and "Christ" in his chest using his own fingernails. So I don't think he was asking. <laughs> he was just trying to say hello. He didn't get the to the end. Well, why was he writing "Christ"? What was he trying to write with that one? Hello, Christ. Hello, Christmas. Oh my lord. So, I mean, I don't know. Tongues doesn't necessarily mean it's a real language. I just said Latin because Latin's. But then, okay, so. It could have been a made up language. It could have just been. If this demon okay. is talking in tongues, how. Why are how, how does the demon know what Helen Christ are? The demons know all. But, like, that's just very specific. That just seems so a what do you, sus to me. You think it was the boy? I don't know. I'm confused I don't, about like, your train I don't of trust, thought. I don't trust that part of the story at all. There's just some, I don't know. Well, I mean, look at the source we're getting it from. I could have written that Wikipedia. today. I could have. You I, probably did. I, I might I, be writing all the content for these episodes and you just don't know. That makes sense. Yeah. That's why. I'm going to do that one episode. Whoever can pick out the right one gets a prize. You get the old cookies that are in that jar. There's Pop Rocks. The Pop there. Rocks. Not much of it. That's more of like a punishment. So, sorry, were you going to say, were you going to say something? No. Oh, so, okay, so we'll move on to number two. Annalise Michelle. I'm assuming that's how her last name is pronounced. M-I-C-H-E-L. I think the French way of saying that is Michelle. So. So. Cool so. yourself. Cool it. Cool it. There's, that's, there's totally no, okay. Annalise Michaud was a 16-year-old girl with a history of epilepsy and mental illness, for which she had been receiving treatment at a local psychiatric hospital. In 1973, she started to lose her grip on reality and became suicidal, refused to touch religious artifacts, and even began to hear voices. Annalise underwent roughly 70 exorcisms over 10 months, ultimately dying in 1970. How many? 70. Oh. 
<laughs> ultimately dying in 1976 after almost a year of exorcism rites based starvation. See? She was believed to have been possessed by approximately six demons, one of whom was said to have been Hitler. That's excessive. 70 exorcisms. Six demons. Girl, like, Hitler. eat your vegetables, like, take care of yourself. Maybe you won't get possessed so many times, I don't know. Well, they're, they said exorcism, rice-based starvation. Starvation. No, so. I mean, like, uh, like, that's just a lot of, you're just letting a lot of demons in. Like, at a I think she point. was just an unfortunate, lucky woman. They're like, this one looks... Tasty. <laughs> Poor Annalise. <laughs> so oh, she was, like, protesting exorcisms? Is that weird? Is that weird? No, she just, she was, she, they just took advantage <clears throat> of her because she had mental illness. So one of the... She wouldn't touch religious art. That's when you know it's... She wouldn't touch religious stuff. Because that's when demons burn. When they touch crosses, I think. I don't know. I think she was schizophrenic. Because she began... It said she began to hear voices. It could have just been schizophrenia. I don't know. Okay. Let's look her up. Let's look at her. What do you all think? You think it was the fruit? Oh... See, this was this one was the basis of the exorcism of Emily Rose. Oh, look at that! Which is another movie. She was in Germany. This one. She was not French. It's got this filler. Connectionless. Now, oh, she only weighed sixty-eight pounds when she died. Yikes! Ooh. That's sad. That just seems yes, like Yes, she had schizophrenia, disturbed behavior, and delusions. She suffered from depression and began hallucinating while praying, complained about hearing voices telling her that she was damned and would rot in hell. Um, she went to San Damiano with a family friend who regularly organized Christian pilgrimages. Her escort concluded that she was suffering from demonic possession because she was unable to walk past a crucifix and refused to drink the water of a Christian holy spring. Hmm. Interesting. But, like, how do they know it was demons? Oh, my Lord. She then, this might be the answer to that question, physically, worsened physically, and displayed aggression, self-injury, drank her own urine, and ate insects. I'm well, sorry, I'm laughing. Drinking uh, your own urine is apparently a luxury. Two. Like, it, 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 people do it for funsies. <clears throat> Are you referring to that one episode of no, my, there's an excessive The worst addiction. What is that show? A lot of addiction. YouTube videos. My strange no, addiction. People do it on purpose for their health, for their glow. You can look into it. Do you? No, Part but I'm just saying. That's like, actually I've like not healthy videos about it. It might be a luxury, but that's awful for your health. Why? In America? Everywhere. People that you know may be drinking their urine. You need to stop alluding to the fact that you might be doing this. <laughs> I am definitely <laughs> so I'm getting a little concerned. Not. Annalise Michelle. I did, did forget it. to get my ginger ale though, and I'm sad. You all that, and you didn't even. I know. Uh, <laughs> well, we're going to talk about Anna Eklund next. Do you want to go get it? While I introduce Anna Eklund? What time is it? 38 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you can't drink too close to bedtime. You might wet the bed and drink it. Uh, <laughs> just, you wake up licking the bed sheet. Ooh. Well, you shouldn't have said that. You're the one that brought it up. Because she, I didn't bring it up out of the blue. It said she was drinking her pee. And I was just giving you some side it's knowledge not that like, I learned recently. <laughs> I'm assuming from... I recently watched YouTube videos. Oh, yeah, you said that. Don't listen to me. I don't. Anna Eklund, the Erling possession. Anna Eklund began displaying signs of demonic possession at the age of 14. While she was raised a devout Catholic, her father and aunt practiced witchcraft. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, that doesn't make sense. You're right. Maybe it's because they always used to take the mother's religion back then. They always, like, you would always take the mother's religion. Like, so if your parent, like, if your mother was Catholic and your father was a Jew, 
you were, you were raised Catholic. Thank you so, so much maybe, for explaining what that means, but I'm Maybe. So like... Well, maybe the father wasn't Catholic. Maybe the mother was. The father was a witch. He was in the coven with the aunt. the aunt. A lot of aunts. That's the recurring theme today. Bad aunts. So, well, she was raised a devout Catholic. Her father and aunt practiced witchcraft, cursing the girl daily and using herbs to taint her food. Wow, so they didn't like her. They did not like her. Eventually, the curses began to take hold of her. She became physically unable to enter churches and grew highly averse to religious artifacts. After a supposedly successful exorcism in 1912, it is said that Eklund's father and aunt prayed to Satan for her continued suffering. Within a year, she became possessed by multiple demons and entities, the very spirits who were believed to have possessed Annalise Michelle. So they're that, just like traveling around. They're they're going to every they're going to everyone. They're just checking out the new real estate. Like, they're oh, scoping. we use this one. Who else can we possess? Oh, let's go to the the girl whose father and aunt hate her. Like, hey, let's go possess someone. They just like all like get together. They're like, let's go possess somebody. In uh, 1928, she was placed in a convent, and her behavior drastically became worse. Anna would often throw her food on the floor sensing that it had been blessed by the nuns who were caring for her. She was also seen levitating, <laughs> vomiting in the presence of priests and speaking foreign languages fluently, despite never having heard them before. After 23 days of suffering and three exorcisms, she was finally declared free from the demonic entities who had possessed her. There is nothing freakier than a child teenagers speaking a language they've never heard before to me i might just be i mean i don't know you've seen coven or asylum of american horror story yeah where they had the <clears throat> possession and the boy was speaking in like pig latin or whatever scary she died in 1941 so she at least lived she lived to 59 so after she got so the the, the exorcism and that didn't kill her so this is saying she reportedly began exhibiting signs of possession during her adolescence, demonstrating revulsion of holy objects, disturbed thoughts, and inability to enter churches, like we said. She, she began to take part in unspeakable sexual acts. What did she, like, what did her father and aunt have against her? That's, like, so rude. What are, like, what? Oh, uh, so both of her parents were German immigrants. Not that that explains anything. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. It's. I wish it. I need answers. As they also made a movie about this one <laughs> called The Exorcism of Anna Eklund. I mean, she died pretty. I mean, fifty nine is not old. Maybe in nineteen forty one. But how do you like if you're like possessed by all these demons? How do you just go and like chill after that? Like, how do you just like go back to your like normal thoughts and like life? And just like that's well, live? especially after. It says that she was vomiting foul debris and what appeared to be tobacco leaves. Oh. Her head, her head, lips, and face reportedly swelled, and she was then speaking in languages unknownst, unbeknownst to her. Uh, she began to shriek, Beelzebub, Judas, Jacob, Mina, followed by Hell, Hell, Hell. She opened her eyes and then spoke in her own voice, saying, "My Jesus, mercy, praise be Jesus Christ." Sounds like an AR intro. So the exorcism went well, but uh, and she but she was still getting possessed after it. They were milder and manageable after that. It's just the the baby ghosts. Yeah. The the intro yeah. demons. The, <laughs> exactly. The, the demons intro. In the uh, de demons in training. They're like. Watch that oh. word now. Um, <laughs> this is the second time I've said it. I know. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, so Anna Eklund was also not her real name. Her real name was Emma Schmidt. Okay. They protected her name. Well, now that everyone knows, you just told well, she's been dead for. Many, she's been dead for years. What if she years. comes back? Don't talk Literally, about it. She died 80 years ago last month. Maybe she joined demon school. Well, that's true. She, Emma, I'm sorry. But that one's crazy. I mean, unable to go into church. Again, we have this theme of religion not working well with these people. So it's like you can't even save them. Levit if I had seen, levitating also freaks me out. Not really. I think it's actually kind of cool. Be, yeah, right? That'd be one cool perk, at least. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if I were levitating, I'd be freaked out. But if other people were doing it, I'd be okay. I wouldn't want to levitate. Sense. I mean, I would, but I wouldn't. You'd want it to be, like, your choice, though. Yeah. I, I wouldn't just want to float up into the clouds. 
and just not be able to stop. Imagine that. How funny would that be? You just start floating and you just keep going. And you're like, Ooh. stop. And it just, it just <laughs> uh, she thought the nuns were were blessing her food. That's a little neurotic. They probably were though. Oh yeah, they pro actually. And she probably sensed it because she had all these demons. Thinking about it, they probably were. You make things sound better after you after you kind of put it into my head that I'm being ridiculous. Thank Sometimes. you. That's what I'm here for. Number four is unknown boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my. What happened? I actually remember this one because it was Pope Francis who exercised him, who's the current Pope. In May 2013, the newly elected Pope Francis performed a short exorcism on a boy whose identity remains guarded. While performing blessings in St. Peter's Square after the Mass of Pentecost, Pope Francis stopped in front of a boy in a wheelchair. After the pontiff grasped the, by the boy's hand, head, sorry, the boy gasped and went limp. Caught on video, the moment went viral, and the recording was later analyzed by a team of exorcists who stated that it was an authentic, bona fide exorcism. Wow. <clears throat> so that one only happened just shy of a decade ago. And it was performed by the current Pope, although I think he's... He's, he put his notice in. He just sense I, I the demons. I don't think he's going to do the priest anymore. Yeah. So they're still Imagine happening. Imagine someone just stops in front of you and is like, you got a demon in there. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do? Oh, that'd be crazy. This is why I need to meet your psychic friend. I know. She. I'm telling you guys, she has a lot of good intel. She's had a lot of experience. Hopefully, she shares them. Or else. Well, uh, I'd be scared to put them no, 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 then... We're not messing with that. <laughs> the we're, we're the demons that might, they, they might latch onto she us. She might have like a posse. She could have like a demon army. I know, I know. Honestly, oh, we're, I'm taking a risk walking, going on the walk, but it's okay. It's a good risk. Bring me some holy not water. Not like I haven't been around it before. I have. We were partners one week in a game. Oh, gosh. It's like a week on game. Well, oh, we played it. Remember? That oh, game. yeah, we were partners. That was fun. We were partners one week. We yeah, I forgot. Again. I totally forgot you played that. We have to pick other people. Yeah. To come. We Nobody. Don't, we don't have. They to. weren't fun. My cousin, None of them were that fun. My cousin can come, but that's about it. I know that could have been. I mean, it was still really cool, but it could have been really cooler. Yeah, I know. Anyway, number five, <laughs> Clara Germana Sele. I don't know how Sele. I guess that's how you pronounce it. It was said in 1906. 16-year-old Clara Germana Sele, a Christian student in South America, made a pact with Satan. It seems like all these people are religious to begin with, and that's the bigger issue. It's like they're almost like inviting it in by being religious, I feel. So you might be safe. I'm good. We good. <laughs> we all good, all right, everyone? I mean, I'm not a practicing. I don't practice anything. I think I think it's like the ones that are like actively going to church that they seek out. So I think I'm safe, too, because I don't go to church. Um, <laughs> days after making this pact, Clara began to experience the typical signs of demonic possession. She grew physically repulsed by the sight of religious artifacts, soon developed violent convulsions, spoke in languages she had never studied, and even knew information about her caretakers that was impossible to explain. Two priests attempted to perform an exorcism on her, oh, no. one of whom she killed by strangulation. During her exorcism, 170 people witnessed her levitating while the aforementioned priests read aloud from passages nice. from scripture. I really want to reread that as like a quirky, like teenage drama. Would you like to? Yeah. Okay. I have a, okay, I have a version in my head as you're reading that. that um... All right. We're casually going to reread this in a, <clears throat> in a, in a different manner. Stay. <laughs> I wish this wasn't such a run on sentence. It was said that in 1906, 16 year old Clara Germana Sely, a Christian student in South America, made a pact with Satan. After Days after making this pact, Clara began to experience the typical signs of dynamic possession. She grew physically repulsed by the sight of religious artifacts, soon developed violent convulsions, spoke in languages she had never studied, and even knew information about her caretakers that was impossible to explain. Two 
priests attempted to perform an exorcism on her, one of whom she killed by strangulation. During one exorcism, 170 people witnessed her levitating while the aforementioned priests read aloud passages from scripture. What a gal. I'm jealous. You make, you know, you make her life sound appealing. It made it sound more fun, right? <laughs> more fun than she probably had. Oh, Lord. That was good. That oh, made it all worth it. I think she died from a possession. Oh, that sounds possible. She was levitating a lot. <laughs> She was out here not... just murdering people. Oh, she was a clairvoyant too, apparently. That was that's another. See, it's like you're already letting shit in. You gotta just keep it out. There's another twist like, no, to the story that we didn't know before. Another piece of the puzzle there. Oh my she God. would reveal the most intimate secrets and transgressions about people she had no contact with. That's freaky. She couldn't bear the presence of blessed objects and seemed imbued with the extraordinary strength and ferocity of a lion. She, <laughs> she would hurl nuns across the convent rooms and beat them up. Okay, nuns were beating people too in that day, so <laughs> not like not like the bad ones didn't deserve it. Did you ever watch the the um the 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 Help me out here. The 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 documentary about the nun that got killed? What was that called? What are you talking oh about? Oh my god. Sister Kathy Sesnick. What was that doc documentary called? Sister Kathy Sesnick. The Keepers. Have you seen The Keepers? Have I asked you if you've seen The Keepers? I... When did it come out? 2017. It's a documentary about a nun that goes missing and they find her murdered. It happened in the 60s, but the documentary just came out. It's really good. Mm. It's really good. It's like seven episodes. Wow. It's really good. Is it good? It is. Is it really good though? It's really good. It's like really good. It is. Why are you questioning me? <laughs> Why are you still answering me so seriously? Because I want you to watch it so we can do an episode on it. Alright, well. It's really... I, yeah, I, if you want to do an episode on it, I'll watch it. I need like the motivation. That's the yeah, we might have, it might be something we do weeks down the line. Because you have like, to... It's seven episodes. It is worth the watch. You underestimate you. how much time I spend watching TV. Oh, good. I'm, I know. I have well, a problem. I keep staying up like way too late to watch TV and I need to stop. But it's like, Oh, is that I why don't... you said, I don't know why I didn't answer you today? Were you, I, I've yeah, seen because you it's asleep. like, I keep telling myself like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep early. And then I get in bed at like 9, 10, which is reasonable. And then I'm up until like 2 a.m. watching TV. And I'm like, why am I so tired? Sorry, I'm just, I'm continuing on the Wikipedia. No animal had ever made such, this is a quote from a nun. No animal had ever made such sounds. Neither the lions of East Africa, nor the angry bulls. At times, it sounded like a veritable herd of wild beasts orchestrated by Satan had formed a hellish choir. Well, they clearly had never heard Gigi, so. <laughs> I don't know. The girl, according to some, was said to have levitated five feet in the air, sometimes vertically and sometimes horizontally. When sprinkled with holy water, the girl is reported to have come out of the state for... Oh, so she she periodically came out. She, her first action was to knock the Holy Bible from the priest's hand. And then she grabbed him and attempted to <coughs> choke him with it. Then she succeeded on one of them. Oh, okay, so she did live six years after the possession. Um, she was asking forgiveness, but she died from heart failure at age 22 in 1912. Totally normal. That's all they have on her. They didn't really give her that much love. They didn't make a movie on her either. She's the only one. Unless they, you know, they're probably not going to make a movie about the one in 2013. So she suddenly just, like, had all the strength to strangle someone? Mm-hmm. That's fun. Yeah. So... Died at 22. Died of heart failure. Yikes. In 1912. Really? Unheard. All of these things are just not fitting together adequately. But anyway, what are your... Do you have any closing thoughts on, um... Exorcism? <laughs> Thoughts. Before we go, where can I get system? one? How much are they? Oh my lord, they're not like lobotomies. We can't just, you know. <laughs> can I Amazon? We can't just. Um, oh my. Well, I'm hoping that I can meet your friend to find out if there's anything around. I know. I think you need to make an appointment. <laughs> we'll pull up the Facebook. I know. Um, we're about to go get our exercise. I, we're, uh, well, no. The last site I saw told me that my 
grandma was watching over me, so I feel like she can like, she could punch someone. She could punch a demon. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you need that verified by my. Well, no, I would like that, but also verified. it's like you know I feel, I feel like I'm good, but so also it's like you never know. know what's like you never know like you. That's the thing. It's like we could just be there could just be a demon chain in the cookie jar. We could just. I mean, I get I get all this stuff from like flea markets and antique shops. Like I don't know what kind of stuff I'm going home. Antiques were choking in my hometown. That's so exciting. Right? But anyway, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this tad bit longer episode of the pod. We really did a special one. This one was a good one. <laughs> I, uh, do you, oh, so I guess I should end on how real do you think exorcisms are versus do you think they are afflictions? I have a lot of issues with the religious aspects of exorcisms, but certainly I do think that people um, absolutely become possessed and there are ways to extract the energy or the what have you. Um, I don't know, just, it's like, it's hard uh, considering I don't believe in anything religious to under, to see all that tie, but I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it would just be like a bummer to get possessed too, because then it's like, what do you really do? Then you gotta like tell someone, then you gotta hope someone believes you. Your face turns green. Mm -hmm. You start pitting. You start spitting pea soup. Scratching hell in your arm, like your just... head turns around, like it sounds very inconvenient. To your teeth possess. get gross. This is all what happened in the exorcist. Film. But it's also like very interesting to think about because you know it all ties back to this like multiple planes aspect where it's like truthfully like we think that our reality is everything, but we're just so we're just puppets. Like you know, what are we even? You're being controlled. My phone. I have an app on my phone that talks about. It tells you that you're a puppet. And it tells me astrology thing today. It popped up. And my morning was going weird. I look at it and it just says, you are not a robot. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that means I am a robot. Coincidence? That, that happened? <laughs> and they're looking right at you. They're like... They're not even like barking at something outside. They're barking at you. Ah, it's me. It's me. <laughs> Come here, help me. Hang on. Let's get a demon so, on camera here. She's going to get, as we close out, we're going to bring one of the... We're going to bring a real life demon to the show. She's not pleased. Dance. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening and watching. Please remember to subscribe, like, rate, review. Ah, follow us on everything that we have. And we will see you on Monday for another episode to be determined. Bye.